Moving on to lung ultrasound, we'll be discussing the theory and how to acquire images and interpret them. Unlike cardiac and abdominal ultrasound, lung ultrasound is unique in that the majority of its interpretation is based on artifact and not real anatomy. The reason behind this is that lung is predominantly air and air is a poor transmitter of ultrasound waves. A famous saying is, air is the enemy of ultrasound, and this is certainly the case. Thus, ultrasound waves cannot penetrate below the pleura, uh, which in ultrasound we see is, or what we call the pleural line, essentially made up of both the parietal and visceral pleura. So everything above it corresponds to real anatomy, and everything below that pleural line is not. So here's the pleural line. Everything above, as you can see here, is real anatomy. So in the middle is soft tissue or muscle, skin. On either side, the hyperdense lines are ribs, and everything below those ribs are shadows because ultrasound cannot penetrate through bone. However, in the middle there, again, that hyperdense line that's just deep to the ribs is the pleura and everything below that is just artifact. So to reiterate the concept of the pleural line, it is the first horizontal hyperdense line just deep to the ribs. In addition to the pleural line, another important concept is what we call A-lines and these A-lines as I was mentioning before, are not real anatomy. They're what we call a reverberation artifact. So to explain this in greater detail, the A line appears very similar to the pleural line. And there's a reason for that. As a reverberation artifact, an A line is essentially just the ultrasound beam going from the skin to the pleural line and bouncing back to the probe. And what we see then is a very similar appearing line that's equidistant between the top of the screen and the pleural line. So if you were to actually measure out the distance from the top of the screen to the pleural line, let's say it's about two centimeters, an A line would be approximately four centimeters from the top of the screen or two centimeters from the pleural line. The presence of A lines indicate that that point in the lung is properly aerated. Next we'll discuss the positioning and placement of the probe. To begin we always want to make sure that our marker is always positioned towards the patient's head. This will correspond to the left side of the screen on the point of care ultrasound device. As mentioned previously we will be examining the blue points we want to make sure that when we hold the probe, that we hold it like a pen. So much like so. And we want it as perpendicular as possible to the chest wall and to the pleura. Next up, we'll discuss uh, patient positioning. The important thing to keep in mind here uh, is the difference between uh, fluid and air and where they go. Specifically, air tends to go in the most independent places and fluid tends to go into the most dependent places. So when we're looking for uh, pneumothorax or air, we would want the patient ideally in a semi-recumbent position uh, and be examining specifically uh, in the anterior chest wall. And when we're looking for fluids, specifically consolidations or uh, pleural effusions, we'd, be, we'd want the patient supine and be examining the lateral and the posterior aspects of the patient's chest. There are a variety of different scanning techniques for lung point of care ultrasound. For the purposes of this workshop, we'll be teaching you the BLUE protocol, or the basic lung ultrasound in emergency. The reason for this is, is that this technique is the most uh, efficient uh, and is most commonly used if in critically ill patients, uh, and also has uh, evidence to uh, back it up in terms of its uh, accuracy for diagnosing uh, respiratory failure and dyspnea. 
for those interested, there are uh, more in-depth and intensive uh, protocols in terms of lung point of care ultrasound examination. Uh, these include the six-point hemithorax and 28 interspace examination. Um, and for those interested, I would uh, encourage you to uh, look these up online. Now we will discuss the technique of lung point of care ultrasound. There are many different formats with which this can be done. One of these is called the blue protocol. In this protocol, there are eight points uh, of examination, four on each side of the chest. Uh, to identify or landmark these four points, we will use something called the blue hand. Uh, to do the blue hands, we take our left hand, and with the fifth finger, or the pinky, we can abut the clavicle, and with the middle finger, we touch the middle of the sternum. With the left hand, we put it right beside the left, and we take the fifth finger again, and at the inferior edge is our phrenic line. Point one is at the base of the third and fourth finger of the left hand, approximately here, which corresponds to about the mid-clavicular line in the second intercostal space. That's point one. Point two is at the right hand at the middle of the palm, approximately corresponding to the just lateral of the nipple in most men. Point three is at the approximately the phrenic line in the mid axillary uh, line. So to find that, we take our fifth finger on the right hand and move along to the mid axillary line to get our lateral point of examination. The last point is the most difficult to get to, but is very important in examination. We continue along this phrenic line, or approximately the phrenic line, and we move into what we call the PLAPS, or the postural lateral alveolar slash effusion syndrome point. To be able to access this point in patients who are intubated or who we can uh, not sit up, we need to uh, sometimes have a second uh, examiner or an assistant be able to roll the patient onto their side and be able to examine this. Focusing in on the interior exam, the first point is the interior chest wall at the second intercostal space, as shown in the video. And then the second point is the interior auxiliary line, uh, which is again at the, about the fifth intercostal space at the interior auxiliary line intersection. In order to optimize uh, image acquisition of the interior exam in the blue protocol, there's a few key tips. The first is the gain. Uh, with the gain, we want to make sure that we're able to see the pleural line appear as white, the tissue uh, that's uh, above or superior appears gray, and the rib shadows uh, appears black. Um, and this is seen in the image on the right. The next thing is the depth. We want that to be set at about five to seven and a half centimeters in order to optimize the uh, resolution of the pleural line and also uh, deep enough to, to see A lines. The final thing is uh, maneuvering the probe. There's two uh, major maneuvers. The first is sliding the probe in a cephalid cotted manner or uh, in a head to toe manner. Um, and we want to slide it uh, in this manner until we have what we call a bat wing sign where the pleural line is right in the middle and is surrounded by ribs uh, on either side and rib shadows. Uh, and this can be seen on the image, now highlighted uh, in yellow, uh, with what looks kind of like a bat flying towards the screen. The second maneuver is tilting the probe. Uh, we want to tilt the probe um, in a way that's uh, away in uh, toward midline uh, until essentially it's as perpendicular as possible to the pleura. And the reason we want to do that is uh, the perpendicularity will uh, produce A lines uh, when the probe is, is uh, almost perfectly perpendicular to the pleura. Moving into the postural lateral portion of the blue exam, the point three or the Third point is the costal phrenic point, which is at the intersection of the mid axillary line and the phrenic line. And again, you want to make sure that the probe is as perpendicular as possible to the pleura. And then the final point, as mentioned previously, is the plaps point, which is the most difficult to obtain. Um, 
but this is at the uh, intersection of the posterior auxiliary line and the phrenic line. Uh, and you want the probe being angled as much as possible towards the sky or towards the ceiling. In terms of optimizing image acquisition of the posterior lateral portion of the blue exam, we again want to focus in on the gain, the depth, and the probe maneuvers. Uh, for the gain and the posterior lateral portion, we want to try and make the diaphragm and spine white, as you can see in the image on the right, uh, and the liver or spleen gray. Um, in this case, the depth should be much deeper than the uh, anterior exam. We want to try and set the depth at about 18 to 20 centimeters, uh, and increase is needed to fully visualize the abdominal organs uh, and the spine. Um, in terms of the maneuvers, we again want to use a sliding maneuver uh, in the cephalid caudad uh, manner to first image the hepatal renal uh, area in the right or uh, the splenal renal in the left. Um, and once we've identified those areas, then we want to slide the probe cephalad uh, until we can visualize the interface between the lung, the diaphragm, and if we're on the right, the liver, or uh, if we're on the left, the spleen. The uh, final thing is we want to, again, tilt the probe, um, tilt it uh, more posteriorly towards the patient's spine so that we can visualize the spine uh, deep to uh, the abdominal viscera.